Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Covert and I'm here with Phil Mimmer of the um, Arts Branch of the YMCA for another one of our Symphoria Community Spotlights. Hello Phil, thanks for being here with us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, we are so excited to be doing this, to be featuring all of the wonderful organizations in our community that serve um, our CNY population. And why don't you just start off by telling us what the arts branch of the YMCA does for our community? Sure. Uh, the arts branch of the Y has been around for 20 years now, and we are a multi multidisciplinary arts education organization serving mostly Onondaga County and a little bit beyond. Uh, we have tons of different programs. Uh, we do a lot of work with the Syracuse City School District. We have about a thousand kids who are with us every day after school for a combination of arts and education programming. And then we also, in our suburban wise, have uh, dance programs and music lessons, pottery and ceramics and visual arts. And then at the Downtown Writers Center, the program maybe the most people know about in the area. Uh, we have a full-fledged adult uh, and also teen literary arts program where we host uh, between 70 and 80 workshops a year, uh, you know, all online right now, um, as well as visiting author readings by nationally known public uh, poets and authors, uh, the Central New York Book Awards, and the literary journal Stone Canoe, uh, along with a lot of other great things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have partaken of some of these things um, and I know it just is, is so enriching when my kids were younger, um, they would take art classes at the Y. And I'm curious to know, because you mentioned that everything is online. Have you been able to provide online resources also for the younger population? You know, we have. We have been doing a series of programs through our website and our Facebook page and social media that is uh, really aimed at giving kids something fun to do while they're stuck at home. Uh, Family Art Fridays are art projects that parents and kids can do together uh, while they're uh, distancing at home. Um, we've also had uh, some other activities as well in that same vein. Um, for teens, our Young Authors Academy just started up online for the first time for this summer session. It'll be continuing again in the fall, so if you have a teenage writer at home, uh, that's a great option for you. Uh, and for our, uh, for our kids in the Syracuse City School District, uh, we, we've been venturing into doing some online programs for them as well. Uh, uh, specifically at McKinley Brighton, where we have a, a state-funded uh, education department uh, grant that funds a large after-school program at McKinley Brighton. Um, and uh, that's been uh, going really well as well. Good. Well, what great resources. Um, so for all of you who have kids at home, Go check it out. We'll make sure to put the link in the post so everyone can click right over and find out all the amazing resources that are available um, to you just because we live in a place uh, where the YMCA is. So that's really great. Um, I'd love to know more about how the YMCA engages and inspires. We really love those words. That's part of our mission at mm -hmm. Symphoria. How do you see the arts branch as being something that engages and inspires? That's key for us too. And you know, our whole push is uh, educational in nature. Uh, and really our, you know, our main focus with that is new artists and the arts curious, you know, people who, have gotten to a point in their life where they just say, you know what, I always wanted to learn how to make pottery. I see they have a class at the Y, I'm gonna go try that and get my hands dirty and uh, see what happens. Or I always wanted, wanted to learn to paint. Or uh, for youth, of course, I like to write stories, but I don't, maybe I don't know anyone else who does. Maybe I'll go to the Young Authors Academy or uh, I'm into art more than sports, so I'll go to arts camp instead of uh, a normal camp program. Uh, you know, getting those people who are uh, curious about the arts, just starting to learn about the arts into solid educational programs to give them a, a, a good foundation to move forward from. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Do you have any success stories you can share with us? Oh, tons. You know, I think our, our biggest one right now, of course, is uh, with the Downtown Writer Center, we move all of our programs online. Um, we, uh, you know, had of course closed our physical facility at the downtown YMCA and uh, decided we would move our spring classes. Uh, the, the, the move uh, happened 
or the shutdown, I should say, happened a week before our classes were supposed to start for the spring. So the timing uh, couldn't have been much worse, but we postponed them a week, moved them all to Zoom, and had an overwhelming response, actually. You know, more students than we would have under normal circumstances by a good dozen or so across the uh, 15 or 16 courses we offered, as well as people from all around the country who heard about the programs and signed up. Uh, either because they had a friend locally who knew about them, or maybe they were someone who had uh, moved away from the area and used to take classes with us. Some who just saw it on Facebook randomly through the page of a friend of a friend. Um, and uh, tonight, actually, we're, uh, we're recording this on Friday the 10th. Um, we have our first uh, online reading series event with a poet named Michael Bondis from New Jersey, uh, who was supposed to come in the winter and then got snowed out, and was supposed to come in the spring and got uh, COVID-19 out. Um, but he's going to be reading for us uh, online tonight. And uh, the whole rest of our spring series that we had to cancel is going to be gradually offered online throughout the rest of the summer and fall. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so wonderful. And I have to admit, I'm I'm one of those people who um, perked up at all of the writing center offerings because sometimes scheduling is tricky. But since we've been home and you can just like <laughs> pop right in on Zoom, it just feels easier in a way. And, you know, that's something that we're really excited about the fall. We're, we're live streaming all of our concerts. And one of the benefits of that is um, people that don't live in central New York will be able to have access to our concerts. So my parents who live in Florida and North Carolina will be able to watch all of the concerts if they want to, instead of flying all the way up. And I know they're really excited about that. And that's something that um, you know, a, a unexpected blessing that's coming out of a global pandemic, I guess. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. You know, we, uh, we've been telling our visiting authors who we already have lined up for this summer, you, you know, giving them the Zoom link and asking them to share it with friends. And, you know, it's been great to see that, you know, people who never would have attended a reading at the downtown Y because they live in Pennsylvania or New Jersey or Seattle or somewhere else, uh, they're going to be showing up uh, yeah. on these Friday night readings because they can. And, uh, maybe it's a friend of theirs who's reading or someone whose work they really admire. Uh, and it's just a, uh, it's a nice outreach for us that under normal circumstances, we wouldn't have been able to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just, I just love it so much. Um, you know, at Symphoria, one of the things that we talk a lot about in our board members, in our board meetings with our board members, and also with our musicians, is this idea of advocacy and awareness. Um, what can we do as the people who know about Symphoria do for Symphoria? So what are the, those things for the arts branch of the YMCA? What are the things that you want people to most know? You know, the big one for us is that we really ask our board members to tell the whole story of the arts branch of the Y, uh, if they can. Uh, we have so many different programs, and often we found that you know, people in one community know about our school programs and the work we do in the city schools. Uh, you know, people in Baldwinsville or Fayetteville or Manlius or Casanova know about our art studios and our camp programs, for instance. People who are interested in books know about the Downtown Writer Center, but don't know about anything else that we do. And we really want uh, as much as possible for the public to understand uh, the wide reach of our program because it really is fairly unique in central New York uh, and is something that makes our organization special. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And I have to admit, I'm a Baldwinsville person who knows about the camps because I've had kids that went to camps and I know about the downtown writer center, but I was unaware of the breadth of this um, after school program that you have in Syracuse. So I learned something new today too. So I'm really glad about that. Um, on a personal note, Phil, um, we were talking before we started and I met you last summer at a lovely outdoor meal um, where our uh, Symphoria assistant concert master um, Sonia Williams hosted and you and Sonia did a poetry music pairing of poetry that you had written and Sonia chose the music to go with it and it was a beautiful reading and it's something I still think about um, and it, it was just it was so fun and I was so looking forward to this interview and then you show up here on camera and you have this really interesting <laughs> soundboard or something behind you and I feel like I don't even know the tip of the iceberg with Phil so why don't you tell us <laughs> what what this is behind you it's so, so sure 
I thought it would be fun, uh, given that this is a Symphoria audience, to pose with a musical instrument. And uh, this is one of my hobbies. Uh, maybe I have too many of them, but um, I've been doing electronic music since I was a 16 year old and bought my first synthesizer. I grew up playing piano and was really passionate about it, but also loved new wave as a kid. I grew up in the, in the 70s and 80s uh, listening to uh, that era of music. And um, so I've, I've been playing electronic music uh, mostly as a hobbyist. I had a very, 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 very brief professional moment somewhere there's a PBS documentary out there with uh, Danny Glover talking over a piece of my music to teach kids math. <laughs> uh, long loss at this point, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, you know, I still continue to do it as a hobbyist and uh, just for enjoyment. And so the thing behind me uh, with all the knobs and, and buttons is a modular synthesizer, um, which is uh, kind of an old fashioned uh, Rube Goldberg kind of way to make music that involves patching lots of chords from place to place and twisting lots of dials and then making something either awful or pretty um, and then ripping it all out and starting over again and just exploring sound and having a lot of fun with it. Well, very cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for being here today to tell us more about the arts branch of the YMCA. We're so grateful for you and for all that the YMCA is doing in the community. And for those of you who are watching today, if you know of an organization that you would love to be featured on one of our Symphoria community spotlights, please um, reach out to me. You can just do it in the post or send me an email at kcovert at experiencesymphoria.org and we will get that set up. Thanks so much, everyone. And Phil, we'll talk to you soon. Bye now. Bye-bye.